Hi, I'm Lauren Ritchie from Waffle TV, sponsored by Westphere, and today I'm with the cast of Species. How are you all today? Yeah, very yeah, well, very well. Thanks. Yes. Uh, would you like to introduce your names and roles to the camera? I'm Josh. Uh, I'm the director of Fat Git, the artistic director of Fat Git, and I direct the show. And I'm also performing in it at the moment because our lead actor has got a part in a popular TV show, which is why my eye is a bit red <laughs> for makeup reasons. Okay. I'm Joe, and I am acting in it because I haven't got any parts in any popular TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> and I play uh, three different characters Robin, uh, Michael, and Brian, all original names. I'm Jonathan. I do have a part in a popular TV show, but I can't talk about it yet <laughs> for factual reasons. Uh, I'm the associate director in the company and the associate director on PC. So tell us about the show. Uh, it, the show is a new play by a very, very talented young playwright who I'm sure you will hear of in years to come, Joe White. Uh, and it's basically a play that imagines what the world would be like if you could change gender at will, overnight. Um, and then what the world would be like in that you know, in that environment. Uh, but it's quite a sort of playful, irreverent show. It's not sort of ray guns and spaceships sci-fi. It's kind of just near future, a bit like Black Mirror, but on stage, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, probably without Charlie Brooker writing me. Um, but anyway, uh, and so, and our, as a company, we're quite, all the shows we make are quite sort of playful and irreverent and a bit tongue-in-cheek and a bit self-aware. It's kind of an arch awareness to everything we do because that's the kind of thing we like. Um, and this play is then about uh, within this world, there's a story of a young uh, girl who is changed into a boy by her parents when she's very, very young. And then as she grows up, we follow her through her life. Um, obviously physically a man, but identifying as sort of neither male nor female. Um, and then what her ambitions become and what she, she wants to believe in. Um, uh, the idea of the show is that we, it's kind of like how... It, it, it's kind of like the end of decadence in a way. Like if you can change and do anything, if you're your own gods, basically. So you know, we don't we don't have to wear the same clothes. We at the moment, you know, we can have any car we like. We can live anywhere we want in the world. All these kind of things. But the one thing we can't change is gender. Um, and so what attracts us to this was what happens if you can change anything, everything? Uh, what happens to the structure of society? What happens to sort of like your what you feel your identity is, what your purpose in the world is, um, and all all that governs. So that's kind of what the show's about. So how do the actors change um, gender? Do you just get different act actors on to play part of the dress? Um, we only, yeah. Well, we, um, all of the characters that are presented are the sex as they are. Um, as in, some of them may well have changed previously, but there is no, um, there is no sex change on stage. Apart something. from one. Which Apart from one. Yes. We do, yeah. yeah we have it a whole big change moment. Done yeah, through. it's kind of a reverent style. With, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Movements. There's a big funk soundtrack to the whole thing. So it's played live uh, by a bassist and guitarist, and then and it's sort of within that bow between the scenes. You have these kind of weird, sort of funky dream bits, and in one of those weird funky dream bits, we um, change the sex of the, the girl. Uh, you'll have to come see the show to understand that one, I think. Oh, I see. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, what appealed you to direct? Like, what was so appealing about the project for you to direct? Um, it was a big challenge. Uh, we haven't done new... This is by far the most difficult show we've ever done. Um, we haven't done new writing before, but I'm, my career, except for the company, is a new writing director. So, I wanted to kind of fuse the two. Um, and... I've just been distracted because another actress is coming. Yes. Would you like to come yeah, join yeah. us? Would you like to join us? <laughs> come join us. Yeah. Squeeze on the sofa. <laughs> squeeze, Hello. squeeze in. This is Saskia, Hi. who is also an actress in the company. Hi. And uh, <laughs> she's playing several parts. Sorry. We were just mid interview. We're just oh, mid interview. Sorry. 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 We're going to edit you in the scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll never know. But, <laughs> I th I think um, what role do you play, sorry? Um, I play Susan yeah. slash Phil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. But I think the other thing that attracted us to it was that sci-fi as a genre is something that yeah, gets sure. a bit bogged yeah, down yeah. in um, Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, continuum transfunctioners and all the kind of gubbins and weird stuff. And actually, the sci-fi that we're really attracted to is the kind of old school Asimov, Philip K. Dick, that kind of sci-fi that's just, this is the idea and, and the idea leads the story. 
um, whether that idea is a spaceship that can think or a, you know whatever but we just wanted to do a show with an idea that was a science fiction idea but then keep everything else natural believable and so that we can people can really empathize with a new world and really get taken outside of their own heads of it um, sometimes I think some some shows fringe it a little bit a little bit twee sometimes a little bit sort of close a little bit small so that which allows their audience to really direct route in um, and then a big emotional payoff because the characters are small vulnerable run vulnerable pretty you know, small small little shows and while those are some of there are some fantastic shows that are built on that premise we're just overwhelmingly arrogant so we decided we weren't going to do that um, and try and do something huge and big and ambitious um, so there was a kind of attraction to um, that stupid stupid arrogance and where can we catch the show 1210 jack dome pleasant stone um uh every day until the 26th um it, yeah uh it's a little bit of a morning show but it's also a big feel good so it'll pick you up you know i'm not going to depress you early in the morning well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Be sure to check it out. This is Waffle TV.